This lesson is going to be runway incursion avoidance. If you look in the PTS, you can see that this is indeed a lesson that you will be tested on. So, I put together the best lesson I can, and um, yeah, we'll get into it. So, what is a runway incursion? Without reading this, this is the definition from the FAA. In your own words, what's a runway incursion? What does that mean to you? That's what I would ask the student. I would see what they know about runway incursions, what's their opinion on it, have they heard of it. Um, then we'll read this definition. From Advisory Circular 9173, a runway incursion is an occurrence involving the incorrect presence of an aircraft, vehicle, or person on the protected area of a surface designated for the landing and takeoff of an aircraft. So to put it in simpler terms, something is in the um, runway environment that shouldn't be there. Something's on the runway. There's a vehicle on the runway that wasn't cleared. There's a plane. Whatever. Something is there that shouldn't be there. And why is that important? Well, it's dangerous. It's very, very dangerous. Um, so that's why we need to cover this so we can avoid runway incursions like the plague and do what we need to do to be safe as pilots. Um, surface movement accidents are one of the biggest safety concerns in aviation. Not accidents in the sky, anywhere else. Surface movement accidents are one of the biggest safety concerns. That's why we need to know about this stuff. Because we need to do what we need to, what we can to prevent runway incursions. They can lead to serious accidents or significant loss of life. Um, with increasing air traffic, more and more people are flying, airlines are staying busy, so more and more traffic at these busy airports. These runway incursions have been on the rise. So, we need to develop and implement safety procedures and precautions to avoid them. Comes down to knowing your airport, knowing where you fly in and out of, using airport diagrams, charts, checking the notams, doing everything you can to understand that particular airport and its environment so you can avoid these runway incursions. Play a little video here that um, it is runway incursion example that happened at Chicago O'Hare. I've skipped forward a little bit to save some time, but during the check ride or during the lesson with the student, I'll play the whole thing. Flying 6972 has been covering about three miles a minute on approach. The controller is facing a myriad of distractions. And United 1015 is exposed on an active runway while focused inward on final preparations for takeoff. United 1015, thank you. Fly runway head, runway 27 left, third four takeoff, wind 1507.
Alright, so just watching that video clip, what stood out to you in that video? That's what I would ask a student at this point. What stood out in your mind? What could have been done differently? In my mind when I watch this, it states, you know, the controller was distracted. The controller forgot that someone else was coming into land, that someone was lining up on the runway to take off. Um, it seems that the controller was at fault here. Um, but with a runway incursion, it doesn't really matter who's at fault, you know, those things are going to be investigated, but the biggest thing was people could have died. There could have been a huge accident. Um, that was really, really dangerous, and so we need to avoid runway incursions because they can be very dangerous, as you just saw in that video. So let's get into some of the challenges of taxiing. I have a couple airport diagrams here. Um, this one is the airport that I fly out of, Ogden, Hinkley. Um, you can see we have two runways, um, a few different taxiways, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, and Echo, I believe. So just a few taxiways, a couple hot spots. Here we have Dallas, Fort Worth. Tons of runways tons of taxiways, complex taxiways, right? We have almost every letter in the alphabet named a taxiway, combinations of those. So when you get a you get a clearance a taxi, it's going to be something really complicated. Compared to taxiing around here, that's a big challenge, right? Some of the challenges can be low visibility, right? It's harder to see. Complex taxi routes as we just saw in that airport diagram. Hot spots. We'll get into those a little bit more, but looking out for them and doing your part in being alert when you're around a hot spot is very important. Compensating for winds. If there's really high winds, we fly really light aircraft those winds can blow us around, you know, if we're not careful. Following taxi lines, going where you're supposed to go, following your route. Jet blast, that's something to watch out for. If the heavy aircraft is ahead of you departing, they fire up those engines, you know, just like a strong wind. Snowy or icy runways, think that can be dangerous? Yeah, of course. If you're trying to taxi around, coming into land or take off on icy runways or taxiways, that can be a challenge. Land and hold short operations, we'll get into that in just a minute, but this can be a challenge as well. If you're asked to land and hold short, it can be a challenge. So what is land and hold short? Do you know what land and hold short means? Have you been asked to land and hold short before? What do you do? Must the pilot accept? If, you, if you're coming into land at Ogden on runway, let's say, 2-1, and they say, hold short of runway 3-5. Clear to land, hold short of runway 3-5. What do you do? Do you have to accept? The answer is no. Only if the pilot in, com in command determines that they can stop safely within the available landing distance. This is published in the chart supplement, so the pilot should know that distance and be prepared if they're asked to land and hold short. When we call up and listen to um, weather information, the ATIS, Ogden, they'll state land and hold short operations are in effect, so you should be prepared just in case. Pilots unfamiliar obviously should not participate. The pilot in command 
has that final authority to accept or decline the land and hold short clearance. They can just say unable or read it back and accept it. You must decline if it's going to compromise safety, right? If you don't think you can land within that distance, if you don't think it's going to be safe, decline the land and hold short. But to accept, just as we mentioned before, you must be ava you must be familiar with the essential runway information, available landing distance, look in the chart supplement and determine your performance, can you land within that distance. Some airports have signs and markings associated with land and hold short. We saw in the previous slide there were markings on the runway, signs that say, you know, hold short lines and markings. You're never forced to accept. You can decline and just request the full length. They might have you go around. They might have you follow a different route in to come into land, maybe a different runway or something. But you can always just request full length if you want. So what if you do accept? What do you read back to the controller if they ask you to land and hold short? I'll pretend I'm the controller, I say. Cessna 52 Victor Alpha, clear to land runway 3, hold short of runway 17. What do you say? What do you read back? Well, you read back those exact things. You say, Cessna, blah blah blah, whatever I just said, I forgot the call sign already, but read back the whole clearance, clear to land runway 3, hold short of 17. But you can always go around, you know? If you're coming in and your approach is not stable, not safe, you get a gust, wind shear, something like that, you don't have to land. You can still go around, just as you always can. Alright, so sterile cockpit procedures. Do you know what a sterile cockpit is? Sterile, right? Well, let's talk about it. Sterile cockpit must implement sterile cockpit procedures during critical phases of flight. So do you know the critical phases of flight? That's another question I can ask a student right here. What are the critical phases of flight? See if they know. Taxi, takeoff, approach, and landing. Well, the pilot's workload should be at a minimum during taxi. That's a critical phase of flight. Workload should be at a minimum. This means eliminate all distractions. Only focus on the airplane, your surroundings, what you're doing at the time. Be as safe as possible. No distractions. At, fly, at FLT Academy, we fly a lot of planes with similar call signs. Um, B flight, and then a number. So, you need to exercise caution, especially if there's another aircraft with a similar call sign. And just ask ATC to clarify if any instructions they give you are unclear. Alright. Cockpit activities during taxi. What can we do in the cockpit to do our part with runway incursion avoidance? Well, first, keep a current copy of the airport diagram. We all have, probably, for flight or Garmin pilot. Have that open. Be looking at the airport diagram when you're taxiing. Some airports might have pre-designated taxi routes for certain runways usually busier airports where there's a lot of traffic going in and out of there. So it's good to review those and be familiar with those. Based on the runway in use, review what you can expect 
At Ogden, we can usually expect if they're taking off runway 35, we'll probably just take Alpha and Bravo, um, things like that. So just kind of know what to expect. And then um, contact ATC before you taxi and write down their instructions. Have a notepad out, copy their instructions, read them back and make sure you understand them clearly. And then review. You can highlight the route on your tablet, review your route, and know um, make sure you know where you're going. And brief, brief your route. Alright, so let's talk about hot spots. What is a hot spot? Do you know what a hot spot is? You know how to find the information on a hot spot. Well, this is critical for flight safety. We can see here. Um, I'm not sure if this is up to date, but this is Salt Lake International Airport. We can see hotspot 1, hotspot 2. What does that mean? Well, it's basically an area of increased potential for these runway incursions. Increased potential for a dangerous situation. Right? These are two runways you can see very close together. Right here, you might enter a runway by mistake. You can kind of see just by looking at it why it's considered a hot spot. Could be confusing. Could be an area that air, air traffic control, maybe the tower, can't see. So be extra alert. Use extra caution. Take your time when you're entering these. Make sure you're looking around, scanning for traffic, and using extra caution. These should be covered during your taxi brief as well. So if you get a taxi clearance, they tell you to go somewhere, they ta taxi to an area of a hotspot, make sure you cover it, say, hey, there's a hotspot, we need to look out for that when we get to this spot. And then we can see details again of this in the chart supplement. We look in there, we go to a page that says hotspots, we find it, we read details on why it's a hot spot. It's probably exactly what we just said. These two runway thresholds are very close together. There's potential for maybe taking off on the wrong runway. So what can we do further in the cockpit um, to avoid runway incursions? Well, briefing. Brief the hot spots. Brief your route you're given. Where are you? Where you're going? And any other concerns? We already kind of talked about that. Situational awareness. Always be aware of your location, where your next turning point is. Listen, watch, know what's going on around you. Keep your head up and keep constantly scanning your surroundings. It'd be very dangerous if you're just looking inside the airplane not really looking around. And expect the unexpected. Expect that maybe a plane's going to dart right out in front of you at any time. Be ready for situations and be ready to just do what you need to do. Alright, so airport signs. This is found in the AIM Chapter 2. It's really important to review all these and know what signs you're going to see around the airport. Mandatory instruction signs, location signs, destination signs, runway boundary or the hold short markings, right? It's important to know what each of these means for safety reasons, obviously. Airport markings, the same thing. We need to know what all the markings mean. What are we going to find around the airport? We know that runway markings are white. You can see here. Taxiway markings are yellow. See all those over there. 
Holding position, markings, hold short lines, they're yellow. You must stop there until you're cleared. ILS markings are yellow, they look a little bit different. Let's see if I can find them on here. I don't know if they have them on here, but they look like kind of a ladder. So there's lines, you know, there's two lines, two lines. It's kind of like a ladder looking. Yellow ladder. Roadway markings are white. We can see some examples over here. That's a roadway. Sometimes it looks like a zipper, like this. Non-movement areas are yellow. Here's the non-movement area boundary, a solid line and a dashed line. We can see that at Ogden when we're taxiing around there. You don't want to go into the movement area until you get a clearance, a taxi clearance. All right, hold lines. Let's say here we got runway five. We call up tower and we say, hey, B flight one. Holding short of runway five, ready for takeoff. They tell you, hold short runway five. What do you do? Do you keep going? Where do you stop? Well, these lines, you need to be behind them, and you need to come to a complete stop on the solid side of the lines. On the dash side, we do something else, but we want to be behind the solid lines, come to a full stop. We don't want any of that aircraft, any of that aircraft even touching the line. Here, I'll draw some short, hold short lines. Okay, let's say we pulled up. What's acceptable, right? Is this acceptable? Is this acceptable? No, you don't want any of the aircraft even touching or close to the lines. We like to say at our flight school, have enough have enough room that you can even turn around if you need to. We fly small enough planes that you can turn around. So we want to be plenty back here, come to a complete stop. That is holding short. If you don't stop, it'll be a runway incursion. You can get in serious trouble. A violation, FA violation. If you're approaching from the dash side, what do you do? Do you stop? No, you keep going, right? You keep, you continue all the way through until you're outside of the solid lines, and then you request further clearance. So how do we steer when we're taxiing? Well, some things we need to do. As soon as we start rolling out of our tie down spot, we want to test the brakes, right? Test mine. Say your controls, they'll say my controls, your controls. They'll, um, the other pilot or CFI checks their brakes. You do that every time you fly. And then we're going to use the rudder and brakes. Um, each aircraft's a little bit different. The ones I fly, you need a little bit more brakes. But once you start rolling, once you start moving, then you can just use the rudders to steer. You don't want to ride the brakes. And you want to keep your speed to a brisk walk. So go slow enough, not too fast, not too slow, but keep it to a, about a brisk walk pace. And then only use as much power as you need. Back when I used to fly Cessnas, I would get going fast all the time. My instructor would always say, just power idle. Just take out that power, slow us down. And then maintaining your position. We already kind of talked about using the airport diagram, reviewing our instructions, watch closely for the location, direction, destination signs, know where you are, where you're going, how you're going to get there and always keep an eye out for other traffic.
All right, let's talk about low visibility. What's the difference? Is there differences in normal taxing versus low visibility taxing? Look at this picture here. Well, you can't see much, can you? You're not going to be able to see certain signs, certain markings. That's why they have it all lit up. So, what can you do in low visibility? What can you do differently than you would on a normal normal day? Go slower maybe, right? We'll go over some things that you can do. No distractions, right? None at all. We shouldn't shouldn't even have them during taxi, but really make sure that they're avoided even more so in low visibility. Taxi slower than normal. Single pilot resource management. Use your chart, use ATC, use everything you can, your resources available to you. And then before you taxi, brief any requirements or special conditions. You know, brief your hotspots, ILS critical areas, places you might need to look out for, especially during low visibility when you can't see it as easily. And then landing procedures. What can you do when you're coming into land? You still got to look out for these runway incursions, right? Even though you're coming into land, you still got to be alert and ready to avoid runway incursions. Brief all your landings once you get a runway assignment. Um, when you land, depart the runway as quick as possible, but make sure to da slow down so you can make your turn. Um, don't use the reverse direction taxiway either. Do you know what a reverse taxiway is? Well, if I can find my pen, I'll draw, I'll draw one. Let's say here's the runway. Right? You're coming this way. Here's an arrow. You're coming that way. Here's a taxiway. Here's a taxiway. Let's say you stop here. Let's say you stop here. Well, where do you go? Do you go on that one? Do you kind of do a 180? Or do you go on that one? Go on that one. Unless they tell you to use this one. If there's another runway over here, an intersecting runway, don't taxi down that runway unless they tell you to. Stop after you're clear of the runway as well, you know? We saw the hold short lines, we, we talked about how you want to go all the way through. Well, stop there and then get further instructions from ATC unless they tell you to continue to taxi. You want to stop there, call them up and say you're clear of the runway and you're taxiing to where, wherever you want to go. Um, make sure aircraft clear of hold short lines. Yep, talked about that. Um, if you're stopped between a parallel runway, only a cross when you're clear to do so. Call ATC for instructions. Maintain a sterile cockpit. And keep that brisk walk taxi speed. Here's another situation I'll give you. You landed on 35 Center here at Dallas Fort Worth. You stopped right here. You're, you're here on this red circle. You want a taxi to Terminal Alpha. What do you do there? You just keep going until you get to Alpha? No. If they didn't instruct you to cross 3-5 left, then you gotta stop here, call them up, and make sure you're clear before you can cross. That is a big potential for a runway incursion if you just kept going, kept taxiing. We'll see the same thing we saw in that video, right? You want to make sure you stop or you're given instructions and you know what your instructions are. 
Controlled and uncontrolled airports are a little bit different. We'll quickly go through this. We've been mostly talking about controlled airports. Um, perform comes down to plan, brief, and review. Any instructions? Use proper phraseology while you're doing so. Read the pilot controller uh, glossary and know how to communicate on the comms. Um, so when you, let's say you call up ATC, you call up tower, what do you say? What are the things that you say? You say who you're calling, who you are, where you are, and where you're going or what you want. Focus on maintaining the appropriate clearance, right? You want to get your clearance, you want to get on your way, so focus on asking for your appropriate clearance um, in your certain situation. Now on controlled airports, it comes down, it's all on you, you know, you need to be familiar with the traffic patterns, with the directions, um, in calm wind, people might be running, um, landing on different runways. Instrument approaches might be using different runways. Um, so you need to really be alert. Listen to the radios. Make radio calls. Communicate your intentions. Listen to other people's intentions. It's all on you at these non-controlled airports to avoid a runway incursion. Scan for traffic before you enter the runway. You still need to hold short before you enter that runway. Scan for traffic multiple times. Listen for traffic. Take a little bit of extra time looking out for that traffic before you announce that you're going to use that runway. Landing and night operations, kind of similar to low visibility. Everything's harder to see. The aircraft's harder to see. You'll need to look closely for those signs and markings like we talked about in low visibility. Use extra caution. Scan your surroundings carefully. Stay on your route. Taxi slower than usual. Same thing as you would in low visibility. The exterior lighting of the plane is used to make um, the aircraft easier to see, obviously. So we use these during nighttime in certain situations so we can be seen. When the engine's running, turn on that rotating beacon or those strobes. When you taxi, turn on your nav lights and your taxi light. Crossing a runway, turn all those lights on. And when you're getting ready to depart, um, turn on the anti-collision lights and that landing light. Um, follow that checklist, turn those on. But be cautious of those um, anti-collision lights, those strobes, because they can blind other pilots. If there's another pilot coming into land, you're maybe sitting right here, waiting to take off. Your strobes are blaring. They're going to be temporarily blinded, so shut those off in certain situations if it's going to compromise safety. Alright, so let's review. That was kind of a long lesson. Um, thanks for sitting through that. We'll review kind of what we discussed. Runway incursions are a hazard to all pilots. They need to be avoided at all costs. Taxing is a critical phase of flight. What are the other critical phases? Take off, landing, and approach. Use a sterile cockpit during those times. Taxing can be complicated as we've seen. Um, low visibility, complex routes, so know and watch for all the signs and markings. Listen to and comply with every ATC instruction. Ask them if you're unclear. Write down the instructions and always maintain that situational awareness. Know where you are, where you're going. Be looking at your surroundings, always scanning for traffic. And we discussed hold short lines, what it means to hold short.
relaxing can be difficult at night and reduce visibility. This whole lesson comes down to safety, being a safe pilot, right? We all want to be safe pilots. The airlines only want safe pilots. Always prioritize safety. Think about safety. Always have it on your mind. Is what you're doing safe? Are you keeping yourself and your passengers safe? That's really the biggest thing here, right? Do everything you can, understand everything that you can to avoid a runway incursion. Alright, that's it. Thanks for watching my lesson on runway incursions.